Hey, what's up everyone? It's Steven. And we might have a few more leaked images of Jurassic World sets, as well as having a couple leaks for Lego Marvel. Well, let's not waste any more time, and let's jump in. Well, I was literally about to post this video about the Jurassic Park leaks that were on Instagram when Lego just pretty much officially announces almost all of the Jurassic World Dominion sets. So scrap all of that and let's just take it set by set and do a little breakdown of each one of them. And let's see how close I was to my predictions for these Jurassic World sets because for most of them, I didn't do too bad. So first, let's start with the two four plus sets. And I will say up front that I was just dead wrong about both of these sets. I thought there was a good chance that these sets were going to be related to the Netflix series Camp Cretaceous. Wrong. Both of these are Jurassic World Dominion sets. So anyway, set number one, 76943, the Pteranodon Chase, is 94 pieces and is going to retail for $20. It comes with two minifigs, Maisie and Owen, and obviously the Pteranodon. All right, quickly, let's look at the box art for this set. We already see that it matches the theme from the prior two leak sets with the Triceratops and the Dilophosaurus and Pyroraptor. We have our orange brick accenting on the far right of the box. We have the dinosaur breaking through at the top right of the box. And then we have our figures and dinosaur in the bottom right with the dinosaur that headlines the set on the left side of the box. And then on the top, we get Maisie's minifig. When we flip to the back, for the most part, it's pretty boring, especially after what they did for the Star Wars N1 Starfighter. But it's just a light blue color splash. We see the different builds. They have the fish and the crab. We see our characters and we see our dinosaur with kind of a basic four plus learn to build. Let's look at the build. We see that we have a little, what appears to be some kind of four by four build, probably a little ATV. It's a very simplistic build. It honestly reminds me of the little tricycle build in the Spider-Man and Amazing Friends set, as my son literally put that one together last night. And then the other part of the build looks like some kind of beach hut or fishing hut. We can see that it has some kind of fish emblem on this flat piece here. And obviously we have a little Lego crab, two little fish, and this trash can, and a nice little palm tree as an accent. And if you look at the front of the build, it looks like it has this little walkway dock that is supposed to be extending into the water, which is shown by those blue tiles. And then we see Maisie holding a whip that I guess is supposed to be a fishing pole. Maybe if those rumored Indiana Jones sets come out, he can go fishing. And then we see Owen with a lasso. All right, if we go over to the minifigs, looking at Maisie first on the left, she has a very basic face printing with some freckles and kind of a smirk smile that we see here. She has a long hair brunette hairpiece that goes down her back. And then her torso printing, she's wearing an olive green jacket over what is likely a red sweater. And then she's wearing a gray t-shirt that it's hard to tell what that is supposed to be. You know what? Let me just see if I can go find a picture of her from the Jurassic World Dominion trailer or images and see if I can figure out what that picture is supposed to be. Okay, I'm back, and I found several images. I cannot find one that is high definition enough where I can really tell what is on the front of her shirt. However, it does look like whatever Lego has printed does look to be pretty similar or accurate to whatever is on her shirt. I just can't really tell what it is. However, it does appear that she has a sewn-on patch on her right arm, which is not present on her minifigure. Her jacket also appears to have a patch on the back of the jacket as well. So it's yet to be determined if she'll have torso printing on the back to match that as well. Then if we slide right, we see Owen Grady's figure. We see him in a plaid shirt, which we do see in the trailer when he's about to pet the Parasaurolphus. He has on a big, huge, heavy trench coat, but if you zoom in and look under it, he does have on this plaid shirt. Then unlike Maisie, he does have leg printing with a belt 
and then some kind of satchel or pouch on the right side. And interestingly enough, they printed a jean pocket on the left, which if they're gonna do that for Owen, why not give Maisie two jean pockets? But I will say the Owen leg printing doesn't appear to be new. And his face printing and hair piece also don't appear to be new. And they seem to be the pieces they've been reusing since 2018. For the Pteranodon, it looks like he's four or five pieces with the wings, body, and jaw. His body is primarily a bluish gray slate blue color with these deeper dark blue accents. And from what I can tell, this appears to be a new coloring for the Pteranodon. We have several other Pteranodon sets before this. We've had a couple red and gray, kind of a red and green, and then just another one that was green. So this blue is a new color splash. So anyways, that's the $20 four plus set. Unsurprising, Lego loves to make a cheap Pteranodon set. All right, moving on, we have set 76944, the T-Rex Dinosaur Breakout. Now I did mention in my previous video that I thought this 4 Plus was gonna have a really big dinosaur in it. But since I was predicting from Camp Cretaceous, I thought it was gonna be potentially the Spinosaurus or the Kentrosaurus. Obviously they're sticking to Jurassic World Dominion for these 4 Plus sets. So in this one, they are giving us a big dinosaur like I thought they might, but that dinosaur is a T-Rex. And it's different from the T-Rex that we'll see later, as this one has a primary green coloring with a darker green and more of a burgundy maroon as accent colors. All right, but let's start by looking at the box. Again, same like all the other ones. We have T-Rex on the far left. Owen this time is our highlighted figure on top. And from the scene that we see on the box and the name of this set, it seems to imply that Owen Grady and Zia Rodriguez are breaking this T-Rex out of some kind of facility. At least from this side of the box, we can't really tell where that dinosaur is escaping from. And I can't quite get enough visual clarity on any of the other pictures to read that circular printed piece that we see on the helicopter and on the tower to see what this facility is. However, given that we didn't see this in the trailer, and this is one of the four plus sets. I'm not really sure or confident whether either of these four plus sets actually occur within the movie. We know sometimes that Lego gets a little free and loose with its inspiration for sets and movie tie-ins. If we flip over to the back of the box, again, we kind of see all of the pieces and characters and dinosaur all kind of laid out very clearly including a dinosaur egg, which is also highlighted in this little scene towards the bottom of the box, with Owen having the egg in a box and the T-Rex aggressively breaking through this gate to get to the egg. I guess we can assume the T-Rex is the egg's mama. And then again on the right, we have the little learn to build with the helicopter. If we move on to the actual build, on this left-hand side, we see we have this tower structure with what appears to be a gate and lights on top, or a fence. It's hard to tell if those swing open or if those are static. Then on the right, extending from the tower is supposed to be a representation of an electrified fence. And then on the far right, we have another little tower helipad with a small little helicopter build on top. We knew we were gonna see some helicopters. Jurassic World loves to build little helicopters. And then, of course, we see our minifigs, our little gator flatbed, the dinosaur egg again. All right, so then if we move over to the figures, we have a wildlife guard, Zia Rodriguez, and Owen Grady. And given that they called him a wildlife guard, I do wonder if they're trying to imply that he's not actually a real bad guy per se, but that this T-Rex was on some kind of wildlife preserve which sort of makes sense giving this little printed emblem piece that we see. But for the wildlife guard, he has a little green hat. His face printing comes with a little ear mounted communicator. His torso printing has a little jacket and a badge on the left side of his chest and a little name plate on the right part. No leg printing and a little tranquilizer gun. Then we have Zia Rodriguez. She honestly has a pretty generic face printing. She has a relatively nice black hair piece that kind of swoops over on her right shoulder. Her torso printing is probably the most interesting part here as she has a gray jacket that is similar 
to Owen Grady's in color. But again, I think this is the jacket and shirt combo that calls back to that moment when he's petting the Paris Aralfus. But back to Zia. I think it's very interesting that she has this band t-shirt underneath the jacket. It looks like it says Tour 1980, and then the third number is obscured enough where you can't really even tell what that is, whether that's an 8, a 9, a 5, a 6. And the basic aesthetics of the shirt looks like it's supposed to be inspired by kind of the 80s hair bands or other rock bands, maybe like a Def Leppard or ACDC. Then she's holding what appears to be a fire extinguisher. And then we go to Owen Grady. I kind of talked about him a second ago. Hair and face print, there's nothing new. We know in the movie where that torso and leg printing come from. We can see that we actually get a new leg printing here. And then his character is holding what appears to be either some kind of torch or emergency flare, which is probably why Zia has the fire extinguisher. And for the T-Rex, I sort of already mentioned his coloring, which does appear to be a new coloring, much like the Pteranodon and some of the other dinosaurs we get. So we get a primary light green or lime green undertone, a darker olive green as an accent that's on the top of his body and over his snout. And then he has a burgundy or maroon accenting going over a bunch of that olive print as well. All right, then we move on to the non four plus sets. And Lego only actually announced four of the sets. The fifth set with 810 pieces is still to be announced. But I'll talk about that kind of towards the end. So our first set is 76945, the Atrociraptor Dinosaur Bike Chase at 169 pieces and is going to retail for $20. This was one of the scenes and sets that I thought was going to happen. Now, I thought it was going to be a little bigger set, maybe a $30 set where they threw in two Atrociraptors. However, what they did instead is included the female white Atrociraptor and then two little baby raptors. It's unknown if they're baby Atrociraptors, baby Velociraptors, or what. And then we also got two figures, with one of them being a villain figure, who until these Lego leaks was unknown. So if we look at the box, again, we're seeing a very similar pattern. We have the Atrociraptor, which if that leak is true, should be named Ghost, even though they actually didn't name any of the Atrociraptors on these sets like they did back for the original Jurassic World sets where each of the Velociraptors got a name. So maybe like Rexy the T-Rex, those leaked names for the Atrociraptors, maybe they're just nicknames or script names, and they actually never get said in the movie. I guess we'll have to wait and see. We see her again on the left side of the box, and then on the top of the box, they're highlighting Owen Grady, and then we also see the two little small raptor dinosaurs. And if we flip to the back of the box, we see a little scene playing out on the top half of the box where Owen appears to be fleeing from the Atrociraptor. However, big mistake, he's not taking his bike, he's doing it on foot. And then on the bottom part, we see the Atrociraptor breaking through that little archway. We see that there's a little play feature here with those baby raptors where you can actually turn them on that podium. And then honestly, the build on the right, I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be. It sort of reminds me of kind of that raptor enclosure that we saw in the first Jurassic World, holding the baby raptor in place. I don't know why it has a little awning on top, and I'm very unclear what these other pieces are supposed to be, specifically the one that Owen's holding. However, one interesting thing that's on the bottom right of the box is it actually gives a little bit of info about your Atrociraptor, at least the size of it. We see the comparison of the Atrociraptor size compared to a human, which that looks like that's supposed to be Chris Pratt's silhouette. And then we kind of see the build. We have the little red motorcycle. For the most part, it's pretty plain, looks pretty similar to other motorcycles they've done before. I doubt it's a new piece, though I haven't looked that up, to be honest with you. Then again, we have the little archway scene and these baby raptors that were not shown in the trailer, so I wonder if that's a reveal that's going to be coming up. Oh, and here we go. We get a close-up view. What we see that Owen is holding appears to be a mosquito trapped in amber. I'm not 100% sure what the thing on the right is supposed to be, but maybe this is implying how other dinosaurs are being bred. And then we take a look at our minifigs. So nothing at all appears to be new about Owen Grady's figure. I believe this is the same figure that we got in 2019 
with the open shirt. And we've already had this leg printing earlier in sets. We have our two little baby raptors. Also, I've been mostly assuming that these are baby raptors, but really all we can tell is that they're baby theropods because I'm not seeing anywhere on the box where it's actually indicating what these dinosaurs are. And honestly, they could even be the Morris Intrepidus, that little dinosaur in the prequel trailer that we see eating remnants of food out of the Giganotosaurus's teeth. So they technically could be anything. However, this one on the left does have coloration that is similar to that T-Rex we just looked at. So that's interesting. The other one is brown with accents of purple and white. Otherwise, the molds look exactly the same. And it's the same baby raptor mold that we've been getting. And we'll actually see on the next set. Actually, that's not true. Maybe the most interesting part of this set, and I kind of talked about it, is this villain character that we get on the right-hand side. So his name is Rain Delacourt, or Rain Delacour, depending if that's a hard T or kind of a silent T. So it's very unknown who this character is. So I went to IMDB and looked it up, and no one on the IMDB page has that character name. Now there's two prominent actors that's toward the top of the list that could be potentially playing this character. So the first is Scott Hayes, who of the two is the younger actor, and he currently doesn't have any character or name associated with him. And then there's Koki Falco, who simply has the character name of Hunter. So it's my bet that one of these two actors is playing this character. We just don't have any information about him right now. And he shows up in multiple sets implying that perhaps he's going to be the main villain in the movie. So I would be dead wrong. I thought it was going to be Lewis Dachshund this whole time. And at least from what we're seeing within these Lego sets, and even in the rumored 810-piece set that does have some rumored figures with it, Lewis Dachshund doesn't show up anywhere. But if we're looking at the figure, he has brown, semi-long hair, but his face printing is the most interesting part because he appears to have what looks like some kind of tattoo on the right side of his printed face. Given the movie, it would be easy to assume that that's a dinosaur, but if we really try to zoom into it, it almost has the appearance of a snake's head with the tongue sticking out, with some fangs coming down from the top. So that in itself is super interesting. Otherwise, he has kind of a stubbled beard look. It appears they almost gave him bags under his eyes and a couple of wrinkles. So I do wonder if that implies that it's gonna be Koki Falco because he's the older of those two actors. If we look at his torso and leg printing, he's also wearing a long gray overcoat, very reminiscent to the one that we saw in the other Owen figure. It's hard to tell what his shirt is. It's some kind of blue and white button up with maybe some bird or dinosaur feathers that's just being covered up by the coat. And then his leg printing includes a belt and the extension of his coat. And his right hand actually has a dark red piece. So maybe his character has mismatched gloves, but a very interesting character and piece. Then we slide over to the Atrociraptor. Again, she's all white, accented with a little bit of brown and a red eye. And at least the name that was leaked was Ghost, which is a pretty cool name. I like it. All right, let's move over to the next set, set 76946, Blue and Beta Velociraptor Capture at 181 pieces and is going to retail for $29.99. Again, starting with the box, same basic design with blue breaking through at the top. However, we do see blue and baby blue, or Beta as I guess is her official name, but it's going to be really hard for me not to call her baby blue on that left panel of the box. And then on the top of the box, we see our characters, and then our highlighted character is Maisie. If we flip over to the back, again, we see kind of our action scene, and this looks much better than the four plus set, as we do get kind of a backdrop to this. Just like the trailer, we can see that this scene is occurring in this snowy mountainous woodlands. Then we have two panels on the bottom. The first one is the little trap with Beta. 
We have our truck build, which I also predicted we would have for this set. It's pretty basic. It's red and white. Reminds me a lot of that black truck that we saw from the Triceratops set. We see that Maisie is also riding either a bike or a dirt bike. And then on the very far right of the box, again, we have a comparison between our two dinosaur sizes and our human silhouette. The one build that wasn't really highlighted on the back of the box is this little overturned tree stump, which essentially acts like a jump for the bike. We do see that highlighted on the front of the box. All right, then if we slide over to the minifigs, if we start with Rain Delacour again, now this is a different face printing than we saw with the other one, but it could be that it's just a reverse side from that other printing. Still has the face tattoo. However, he does have a different torso printing. He still has the gray overcoat, but his two shirts on the underside are different with a red shirt and then probably a blue thermal shirt under that. Still has the mismatched hands. Then this is probably my favorite of the Maisie minifigs. I love the fact that they gave her a beanie and hair combo. Otherwise, I don't think her torso printing is any different. It does look a little more orange in this picture, but I think that's just the quality of the picture. I bet it's still the same as the other one. And then we come to Beta, or affectionately known by me, Baby Blue, and probably half the internet. This is like Baby Yoda here. But I love how much Beta's printing mirrors Blue's printing, which Blue is a new color splash for that Raptor mold. And it's probably the most accurate of any of the colors that we've gotten so far of Blue. Both of them are primarily gray, with off-white and dark blue accents. And really the coloring and accents are just so similar on the two of them. You can just kind of tell that they're related. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a brand new kind of baby raptor mold. The one that we had previously, we saw in that Atrociraptor set. And unless I'm just misremembering, which I definitely could, and please let me know down in the comments, I think this is a new baby raptor mold. And so far in general, I'm really liking the dinosaurs that we're getting here. I think the four plus dinosaurs were maybe the most boring, but I really like Ghost the Atrociraptor and this new updated look on blue. So this is now the second set that I predicted Lego would make, with the first being that Atrociraptor set and the second being this blue and baby blue capture. I just essentially had them flipped as far as which one was going to be the $20 and $30 set. And for my third predicted set to come true, it's the Quetzalcoatlus Plane Ambush, set 76947. I will say I did think this was going to be the $49.99 set, not the $39.99 set, just because I thought this twin boom airplane was going to be a little bit bigger. But still, hey, that's at least half points. So for adding up half points, I'm at like one and a half right right now. So we'll start with the box, and I didn't say it, but it's 306 pieces. We have the Quetzalcoatlus breaking through on that right upper corner. We see the Quetzalcoatlus flying over our twin boom airplane. And then the Quetzalcoatlus is highlighted on this left part of the box. On the top of the box, we see the three figures with Kayla Watts being highlighted. I'll get to her in a little bit. If we flip it over to the back, we see our scene playing out of our apparently wrecked plane with the Quetzalcoatlus flying overhead. Then we have a zoom in of the cockpit, which because this is a smaller build, that is a pretty tight fitting cockpit. Unlike the actual scene where Claire and Owen are facing forward, they're both turned and facing each other. And we have Kayla flying the plane. And then we have these markings on the side. And that looks to be a sticker just from the difference in the color tone here. The other panel shows that the engine, I guess, pops off to show kind of some damage that the plane takes. And then again, what I'm really liking with this is we're having our size comparison from our dinosaurs, and in this case, a pterosaur, our Quetzalcoatlus, compared to our human silhouette. And we see that the Quetzalcoatlus was the size of a giraffe, essentially. And then we go to our actual build. The color tone difference here really does make this apparent that this is a sticker. And then we also see that we have a few more stickers on top of the plane, and then again on one of the wings. Other than that, I'm not seeing any obvious stickers. The front of the plane is one molded piece instead of being brick built. All right, then if we go to our figures, and unfortunately, we're starting with Kayla Watts, and that hair piece that they gave her is an absolute travesty. It looks 
atrocious. It just looks terrible. When you compare her side by side with what her character actually looks like in the movie, woof, it looks bad. And other Lego hair pieces exist that would be closer. So I'm really confused why they went with this hair piece. It just does not look good. If we ignore that, her face printing looks very generic. Her torso printing, she appears to be wearing a bomber jacket, which I like. It's hard to tell what her shirt is here, but it looks to be some kind of green button-down shirt. But it's a nice detailed torso. No leg printing whatsoever. Next, we come to Claire Deering. And I believe this is new printing for her. At least that's a new hair piece for her. I also think that's a new face print that they're using for her as well. And then there's no leg printing. And then Owen Grady, we've gotten this figure already. But I said in my first video that this set was absolutely going to happen, and I was 100% right. Obviously, I was off on which set it was going to be, as I thought it would be the bigger set. It makes sense with this molded front end that this came in at 306 pieces. But watching that trailer, I just knew that this was absolutely going to be a Lego set. So of all the sets that we've seen, this one just does not surprise me at all. But that does transition us into the set that does surprise me and I did not see coming and didn't predict. And that's 76948, the T-Rex and a Trociraptor Dinosaur Breakout for 466 pieces and retails for $79.99, which is different than what the leak said as it had that set at $49.99. Now, if you want to give me like one-tenth of a credit or a quarter of a credit, I said that there was going to be some kind of more villain-centric set. Maybe you could call this that. That's kind of a stretch, though. I don't think I get any credit for this. But we do have what appears to be two villains in this set, the T-Rex. We have the orange Atrociraptor that we saw multiple times in the trailer. Then we also have a pretty basic archway build and this transport truck. The box is super similar with the T-Rex highlighted in the right-hand corner and on the left side. The top of the box has our four characters. We see an egg, but the highlighted character is Rain Delacour. So again, maybe this is a villain set, yeah. Flipping over to the back of the box, this is where we kind of see the aspect of the T-Rex breakout as the T-Rex is poking through this little archway. And I don't know if this is supposed to be some kind of enclosure on the bottom part or what. If we look at the paneling, we can see that the T-Rex pokes his head out of the left side. The truck can actually drive through that archway build. We can see that the enclosure on the back of this semi build is removable and that the Atrociraptor can go inside. I do wonder if it really fits with its tail. And maybe as we go through these pictures, we can see kind of the backside of that truck. But it appears it does have a ramp that slides out as well. Then we get a highlight of our villains, because this was a villain set, you know what I mean? And then the bottom right, we have our human silhouette comparison to T-Rex and the Atrociraptor again. So there doesn't appear to be any markings on this semi-truck denoting like a corporation or anything like that. My theories have been Biosyn is going to be the villain for most of this. We're not seeing a ton of that to back that theory up, so maybe that was a dud. We do get a look at the door of the enclosure flipped up. It does have a little opening to potentially look out of. I am a little skeptical how well that Atrociraptor is going to fit in that enclosure. Maybe it'll have to be sideways or something awkward. So if we move on to the minifigs, I'm not going to really cover... Owen and Claire, because they're the exact same figures we just got in the Quetzalcoatlus plain ambush. There does appear to be a, like a little spider, which is interesting. And I think that Owen's holding another piece of amber with probably a mosquito in it, and there's a couple of eggs. I think the much more interesting thing here is the villains. So again, we have Rain Delacour. He's the exact same figure we got from the blue and beta set. However, we do have a new villain here or I assume she's a villain. Her name is Soyana Santos, and we know nothing about her, just like Rain Delacour, or Court. I don't know which one it is. If we jump back over to IMDb, 
I believe her character is being played by Daichin Lockman, but she's a blonde actress that, again, has no character name associated with her, and she's toward the top of the actor credits. But if we look at her actual minifig, I really like it. It appears she has the exact same hairpiece as Claire Deering, except she has a blonde variant. Then it appears she got new torso and leg printing. It's a little hard to tell what her torso and leg printing is, as they really don't give us a good straight-on shot. She either has the trank in front of her, or she's turned to the side, or it's on a really big image, so when you zoom in, you lose a lot of the visual clarity. So I can't quite tell, does she have on like a lab coat or just a white overcoat? However, she doesn't have any arm printing, so it makes me wonder, it kind of makes me doubt the coat theory. Maybe she has some kind of scarf that's being represented, though that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because she appears to have some kind of tie going around her waist. And honestly, with probably the best look we get, it looks like maybe it's some kind of sleeveless coat or something, or vest. The most interesting thing is I think she has a very deceiving, sweet smile on her face, but I'm presuming she's a villain character. And after going all through that, I'm saying that's a villain set. I'm calling it. It's a villain set. I get partial credit. And then there's our missing set. Lego set 76949, which is supposed to be 810 pieces, and is thought to retail for $120, and is expected to release with all these other sets. Now, I predicted in my last video that this was going to be the Giganotosaurus set. I thought it might be like a Giganotosaurus versus T-Rex, or a Giganotosaurus versus some kind of other herbivorous dinosaur, because that's a common thing that LEGO does. And according to Stone Wars, who has some information from an unnamed source, but again, Stone Wars tends to be pretty accurate with a lot of the leaks that they post. They're saying that the other dinosaur in that set is going to be the Therizinosaurus, which I talked about as a possibility in my other video, but I just did not expect it. We do see that it shows up in the trailer, as it's the feathered dinosaur that's following Claire Deering into that pond of water and kind of screams at her while she's underwater. I really liked from just kind of a cinematography angle. They're saying it's going to have six minifigs with Owen Grady, Claire Deering, Kayla Watts, and then we're going to have two original trilogy characters with Ellie Sattler and finally Alan Grant which it appears LEGO has made exclusive to the most expensive set in this wave, as Ellie Sattler and Ian Malcolm show up in a smaller set. And then they're also saying Dr. Henry Wu is going to show up in that set, which again makes him exclusive to that set as well. But if this is all true, that means no Lewis Dachshund, which I thought for sure was going to happen, but I guess he just does not play a prominent role in this movie or Lego just didn't include him. So no speculation about what the build might be, but given that a lot of these leaks are starting to come out right now, it probably won't be long until we find out a lot more information about this set. My guess at the rate of these leaks, it's going to be sometime in this next week. So stay tuned. And then we'll get to our final set, which will probably be of least interest to most people, but it's the Lego Duplo Jurassic World set. This is set 10938. Brick Merge had had this set number for a while, and that this was going to be a Duplo set. It's going to be 27 pieces, a 2 plus set, and appears to have three baby dinosaurs. Now, I think we've had this baby sauropod and baby triceratops build before, but I believe these are different color printings for them. And honestly, this looks like a baby Brachiosaurus, the way that it kind of has the snout on top of his head. But with that, we also get a baby pterosaur, perhaps a pterodactyl or a pteranodon. The builds are pretty basic, very consistent with Duplo. Maybe a little cave build, a little tree. This other one's probably a little nest sitting on some rocks. And then the minifig, I believe, is Claire Deering, as we do have a regular minifig that looks strikingly similar to this one. And it's also coming out in April. And lastly, we'll move over to a few leaks and rumors for LEGO Marvel. So first up 
is this Lego Spider-Man set, 76219 Spider-Man and Green Goblin Mech Battle. Now, we had known about this set, we knew that it was a mech set, and we knew the piece count of 296. However, it had been speculated for a while that this was going to be an Ant-Man and Wasp mech set unrelated to the Quantumania movie that's coming out next year, that it was just going to be a Ant-Man and Wasp set that was released and was tied more to the Lego Marvel brand than any of the movies. However, we now have images that this is Spider-Man versus Green Goblin. Interestingly, this is not the same box art as the Spider-Man No Way Home sets. So even though we're getting a battle between Spider-Man and Green Goblin, it does not appear to be directly connected to that movie. And obviously, if we look at the set and the minifigs, this Green Goblin is much more of the comics or cartoon version of Green Goblin. Other than that, they both look very similar to a lot of the other mech sets. Of course, we've already had a Spider-Man mech set. This one does look a bit better than that one. The Green Goblin one is pretty interesting. I like how for the feet of the Green Goblin mech, they almost kind of made his little booties. And I do like the claws that they gave him on his hands. So in summary for this Spider-Man and Green Goblin mech set, it's going to retail for $19.99 and is going to be released in April, possibly on April 1st, but in general, these mech sets don't just get me super excited. However, I'm interested to see what you guys think about them. All right, my goodness. So what do you guys think? Are you liking those sets? What's your predictions for the set that hasn't been announced? Do you think Stone Wars is right and it's the Giganotosaurus? Are you buying any of these sets? What do you think of the Marvel sets? Let me know down in the comments below. I can't wait to talk to you about it. And if you like videos and content like this, I'll always appreciate a like and subscribe as it really does help the channel. But thanks again for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you next time. Cat, what did you just do? Looked like you tried to run up the door. You failed, obviously.